Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 18 of my programming with Python 2.5 through 2.7 tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a basic chat server, and I'm going to use two different modules. I'm going to use the ASIN core module and the ASIN chat module. And basically, what we're going to do here to make this more simple is the data or the information that's being passed in is going to be sent to what we call a dispatcher in this module. And you could think of that as a socket, if you'd like. And then you're going to have the port that we're going to define to listen for incoming data. And all that information is then going to be processed by methods inside of this module. So if you want to think of this port as the end of a hose, then you would think of these sockets as little connectors attached to the end of the hose. And all the data flows through the multiple sockets into the one port. And then this module processes everything. So hopefully that makes sense. And this is going to allow for people to all log into the same port and talk to each other. So the first thing we need to do is to import our modules that we are going to need. Here's the dispatcher that I talked about earlier. In ASIN Core, basically all it, what it does, this module, is it reads all the information passed to whatever defined port that you tell it to look for. And it just continually just checks and checks and checks until it gets information. And the dispatcher, like I said, serves as a socket that stands between the data sent to the port and the application that will interpret that information. And I typed import in here twice, like I like to do. And we're also going to need the ASIN chat module. And this basically is going to allow us to easily read and write to the socket. So we're going to read information that comes into the socket. And then we're also going to output information from the socket using this little guy. And finally, the socket module. And then we have to define a port that we want to use. So let's just say it doesn't matter. I'll just say 5,000. And we have to give it a name. And I'm just going to call it Chatline just so it has a name. It, basically what I'm doing here is I'm importing all of these modules and they have defined methods that I need to go in and override. And all of this information is basically taken from that website, the creators of this module with some changes here and there. And I'm making a call to the constructor, calling the constructor for async chat. And if you wanted to do this, you basically could just copy the code. That's all it is. I mean, you just, when you're working with modules inside of Python, I guess I haven't really done this before, but a lot of the things you're going to do is just import the said module and then define a couple specific things. But for the most part, if you want to create a chat system, you're going to follow this basic rule. And the terminator basically is a new line statement. So what it's going to do is every time a new line is entered, meaning the person hits, type something in and then hits enter, that's going to signal to the display dispatcher that it needs to send that information somewhere. And here we're just going to store that information in a list. And then this next collect incoming data is just called whenever text is passed through the socket. Again, I know to use these methods because the module specifically tells me what methods that I need to use and how I need to override them. So it's basically just copying. I'm not doing anything really amazing here. And here I'm going to define what to do when somebody types in a new line. What this guy's going to do is every time a new line is signaled or goes through, it's basically going to notify everyone else who's connected to the same port that new information has been sent. Use the join method. Create another list with all that data. And then the next line of code is going to send all the data sent to each client currently connected. I'm going to define this below. Hopefully this is understandable. This is why I don't do network programming stuff because some, this starts to become a little bit complicated. And just send it that string that I called line. And then you're also going to have to define what's going to happen when a connection is closed. And this method is basically going to be called whenever somebody disconnects from the server. We just want to say we want to disconnect them. And I could have this set up so that it would only allow people to log on with the user ID and password, but I thought that was getting a little bit complicated. And here I'm defining the dispatcher, or the actual pipe controller. And I'm going to have to call the constructor and send it the port and the name that we define. And then here we're just going to actually create the socket using again already defined predefined methods that the module tells me to enter. 
And here I'm going to use transmission control uh, protocol, which is pretty much standard across the internet. And I define that by typing it A-F-I-N-E-T. Again, this is just copy and paste if you want to use this. Sock stream means that there's going to actually be a real connection to the port. And then as some protection, and basically with this next method, I'm going to protect and keep the port open even if somebody disconnected from said port in the wrong way. Bind. And this just basically binds the socket to the port that I specify. And here I'm going to define that I'm going to listen for any incoming connections with a maximum of five total queued connections. And here's a list for all the different sessions. And then, I'm almost done actually. I have to come in here, provide the disconnect method. And then here is broadcast. This is called anytime anybody sends information to the server. What it's going to do is send it to everyone else who's currently connected to said port. And it's just going to cycle through all the current sessions and use the push method to send the same message to everybody. And I'm just going to put these dashes in here so that, or these two carat braces anyway, just so you can tell the difference between what you type in in comparison to what is being sent out. And line is just going to be the string that was sent. And I'm going to signal a new line. And this is going to be called whenever the server accepts a new connection. And this allows the new client to connect to the server, and whenever a, per, a, a client is assigned to the server, it's going to assign them a, a socket that is special to them. And then with this method, we're going to add a new session to our list. And then down here, I'm going to set it up so that this would actually operate if this program was running on its own. I've already talked about this in previous tutorials, which it's obviously going to run on its own. And chat server here is going to keep a list of all the current sessions connected. And here we're going to set up some protections with exception handling. And this loop right here is just continually going to check over and over and over again if anybody sent a new message. And that is all the code. I mean, I know it was kind of complicated. I'm not certain that you got all of it. Hopefully you did. And we're going to just run this guy, see if I made any errors in typing. And I actually had to come up here. I chose 5000 port, which was currently in use, so I changed it to 5006. So now it works. And then I'm going to jump into my terminal here. And I'm going to call Telenet and change this to 6 which is the port I'm using, and connect. And if I type in hello, you can see that it signaled back hello, which isn't very impressive. But let's say I open up another window, basic. So now I have two terminals open at the same time on the screen. And if I type in hello again, and this guy is also logged in, and he types in hello, you can see But that information, these people are successfully chatting to each other and type in a whole bunch of nonsense so you can see that information passing back and forth. So that's basically how you set up a chat system using Python. And this was originally supposed to be the last Python tutorial, but Scott sent me an interesting request in regards to natural language processing and a whole bunch of other things. So I think I'm going to continue doing these little guys here for just a little bit longer. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Till next time.